Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand. Welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Tuesday, March 12, 2024, a after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a time for change call tomorrow night, Wednesday, around 9 p.m. Eastern. As always, we have a lot to cover. The normal self is the mind. The mind is with limitations. But pure consciousness is beyond limitations and is reached by investigation into the I, Ramam Rishi. Initially, intentionally discovering the source of our being is not always an easy task as the ego is very strong. The prison walls of the mind are thick. It doesn't believe we always have access to an infinite source of bliss all the time. The ego becomes very embarrassed and ashamed, feels stupid for missing this, and thus feels that there must be some massive mountain to climb and overcome to reach heaven here now. Yet the more we struggle and let the mind run the show, the stronger and more real the ego and its fabricated system of beliefs becomes. We must choose to dig deeper inside to find the real path to freedom which is super magical, amazingly powerful, and able to walk right through these prison walls. All the beliefs of the mind must be pierced all the way through if we are to ever find liberation from its imposing structure. We must choose to see and experience each specific belief for what it is, merge with it, and dissolve into it until there is nothing left of the belief of ourselves. When it comes down to it, the experience of finding freedom from the ego is actually quite simple. It's all about opening up to the most relaxed and non-efforting approach to this life you can imagine. We must choose to surrender all efforting if we truly want to arrive. It is only through trusting in this deep, wheat, let go, that we find the timeless, spacious, vastly deep connection with the divine. When we finally give up our inner battle, we realize how futile all of our past efforts have been and what little power our belief system actually has over us. When we discover how deeply cherished and lovable we truly are, we stop being consumed with the outer and fall into the infinite mystery of the inner. This is the only place where absolute freedom can be discovered. It's often been found that how we judge, label, and define others says a lot more about ourselves than about them. Our labels darken our sunglasses, blocking the full spectrum of colors from the divine to shine through and touch our soul. When we start digging into our own belief systems this week to see what's there, just notice how attached you are to them. They are the most powerful and personal things in this universe. They form every aspect of reality that we believe is true. Approach them with this awareness and you can only find freedom from them 
along the way. See where your beliefs came from. Notice what age-specific beliefs formed for you and how they were handed down from other people around you. All of our thoughts about ourselves come from the outer world in this lifetime or another. Who you are at the very core are pure innocence itself, free from all labels and beliefs entirely. You were simply covered up like a light bulb caked in mud, but the beliefs of others imposed upon you by the beliefs of others imposed upon you. This realization in your innocent light nature is essential on the path to total freedom. The innocence is more personally intimate than any belief will ever be. And thus is why our entire lives are wrapped up in unraveling who we really are. Understanding, it's like, it's like another step towards transcending our belief system is understanding that they are not the enemy or something we need to get rid of. It is our resistance and need to control them, which is the real enemy. Life becomes a more rich and wonderful experience because we are wearing so many pairs of sunglasses and having to release so many layers of mud about who we are and what the world is about. If we never formed a belief at all, we would only see the divine throughout the entire life journey. And there would be no exciting purpose or deeper mission for coming to visit this planet Our beliefs give us something to grind upon, push against, giving us direction, motivation, desire, and a sense of separateness from the source. This is essential so that one day we can dissolve through them, feel a sense of freedom, and return home. It is a fantastical journey, an outrageously creative invention of a use of time, mind, and the energy of a soul. You may want to write down all your major core beliefs about yourself, others, and your life, and this world. This is so that you clarify them and see what they actually are. Once you can see them, you can embrace them so they're not just floating around the neuronal soup and the synapses of your brain. Realize that you created these beliefs. Take responsibility for each one. Being, perhaps, who you stole it from, who shoved it down your brain, and why you eventually decided to adopt it. The key to this step is taking ownership without any sense of judgment of it being right or wrong. It is simply a belief, a thought structure that was formed about reality. Have an experience of believing in the belief and then explore what it feels like to let it go. This release is the final step towards complete and total liberation and ultimately requires no action at all. 
It simply happens on its own accord when we drop into the infinite source of our awareness, pure consciousness itself. When we remain super conscious and aware while embracing this old precious belief experience, a merging happens that liberates us from this illusionary prison forever. Which is the real power? Is it to increase prosperity or bring about peace? That which results in peace is the highest perfection. Sri Ramana Marishi. Now, if you have trouble identifying your core beliefs, remember that they are highly emotional and deeper than having subtle preferences about this life. They are statements that say that this is the way life is and it cannot be any other way. A preference tends to bend while a belief will crack our very foundation of shaken. If all we had were preferences about ourselves in this life, it would be a much easier and more enjoyable ride. Yet, the ego wants safety, purity, and thus creates a firm, rigid structure about who we are and who we are not. These ideas create difficulty and an extra feeling of challenge in our relationships with work, money, intimate relationships, lifestyle, sex, physique, health, food, etc. The list goes on forever. The ideas you have about you have been there a very long time and may not budge very easily if you try to uproot them. This is the good news. Bad news. Both. The trick here is to take ownership of the belief that is creating the problem. Declare full responsibility for it. And then completely release all identification with it. The greater the freedom we experience, the deeper the challenge must be. When you see that you created every aspect of your identity and are no longer a victim on any level, you become empowered to become undefinable being, a soul who is multidimensional and constantly playing in the creativity of reality however you wish it to be. Approach this exploration of unraveling yourself in the most gentle, patient, and unconventional way. Don't try to fix anything you find. If you think something is broken, you're simply not seeing the gift of strength it's creating deeper within you. The tendency is for the mind to replace every negative self-esteem with a positive self-esteem as that would be an unending, tiresome, slippery hill to climb. Because how the ego would like to be will never, ever be good enough. The day on which we, be, we come to know the supreme consciousness within us, then the outside world will also appear to us like the expanse of the supreme consciousness. The whole will be a mirror to us when we become a mirror within. If we stand near a stone, then we will be able to see ourselves even in the stone. Oh, so.
Every day, all of us, every day, 24-7, we've got massive amount of thoughts flying through our minds. Average, about 60,000 thoughts every 24 hours, give or take. So it is no wonder that we may get lost living up in our heads and have a hard time keeping track of it all. Now, the mind is highly activated. It's, it is a highly activated thinking machine. And it's always presenting us these opulent gifts, these creative gifts. We can do whatever we wish with these thoughts. We can ignore them, welcome them in deeper, invite them to flow in stronger, store some of them away in our subconscious closet, or have fun unwrapping one delicious thought after the other, savoring each one thoroughly. Now, the thought that places you in complete power of your life is the one to dwell deeply. Concept which opens your mind up to a universe of new possibilities is the one which needs to be adored and cherished all day long. The thought which ignites the most awesome creative force inside us is best to be held permanently sacred and true. If you wish to manifest the most outrageous success in your life, meditate upon perhaps one of the most enlightening and empowering thoughts that will ever be tossed across the creative canvas of the mind. And the thought I'd like you to play with this week is that you are the highest authority in your life. Bar none, you are the highest authority in your life. Now this thought means that there is nobody and no thing outside of you who has more power than you. You are the creator of your destiny and you are constantly manifesting the reality you see, smell, taste, touch, hear, and experience all around you. Whatever direction and dimension you are placing your attention in each micro moment is what you are seeing, experiencing, and manifesting more of. What's amazing is that all these thoughts appear and disappear continuously out of a source of pure awareness. Everything you want or don't want is being created within this energy of awareness inside of you right now. And whatever you focus your mind upon will grow in energy and frequency. It isn't even debatable. It is a constant. Do not strain yourself to understand all of life's mysteries at once. Accept each one as it comes and fit it into the jigsaw puzzle. Knowing that bit by bit, each piece will be shown to you and will fit into place perfectly. Become like an empty vessel, ready to be filled, Eileen Caddy. We know that Everything, absolutely everything, in this life is multidimensional and multisensual. 
This means there are many more layers and levels to explore after we scratch the original surface. Now, when you peer with an electron microscope into a drop of water, you will find layers of complex and unexplainable miniature worlds within each deeper world. The great mystery of this life multiplies, deepens, and expands the further we peer down that rabbit hole. The same applies to when we meditate on the concept that we are the ultimate authority of our reality. Take a few minutes to sit with the context of this concept how it applies to your own life. Notice how this little exercise shifts your experience of being alive. Now, this is not ego mind. This is heart mind. Now, when any of us initially meditate upon this idea for the first few days, we may have a variety of random responses. We may notice our mind rejecting it denying it, trying to ignore it, or making up a dozen reasons explaining how and why we truly are not the ultimate authority of our reality. It will do everything it can to convince us of this. You may even get caught up in old belief patterns that prove this idea to be completely wrong. Now, your mind it may also surmise that you understand the idea completely and that there's nothing further to learn from it. You could also stop everything, your thinking, and surrender yourself completely to this super potent and juicy idea and soon discover a plethora of hidden realms enlightening paradigm within yourself which you never knew existed. Whenever something extremely powerful is introduced into our lives, it tends to disrupt the normalcy we previously had. And we may unconsciously tend to avoid it. Be careful of avoiding this concept on any level because it will place your life on the lower back burner or worse, drop it into the bottom of the barrel. Whenever we start thinking that we already know everything there is to know about a particular subject, we believe it's a dead idea. And then we relate to that deadened energy within ourselves. There is always something to learn and master. Even the greatest artists work harder to reach a higher state of perfection. When we look at the word authority, we see that has the word author in it. You are the ultimate author of your life who is writing the script, telling the story and tale of who you are and who you are not. What is the story you most want to stop telling what would happen if you simply stopped focusing on it? When we feel into the quality of being the author of our life story, we can sense there's something firm, solid, and unmovable in it. This is because the foundation of our being is unshakable. 
we are the one who is undefinable on a spiritual level. And yet, on a human level, we spend our entire existence defining and labeling everything around us with words and thoughts flowing through our mind. On a specific perspective, being the authority of your existence is proven in quantum mechanics. We now know that the basic structure of existence, atoms, electrons, quarks, orms, etc., exists for us only when we are looking at them. The moment we remove our attention, they mysteriously disappear as if they never existed at all. All, I would say, the majority of quantum physicists agree that atoms, thoughts, okay, atoms are thoughts, don't actually exist in one particular location either. Meaning, if you never look at any one problem or personal issue again with your mind or imagination, never giving it any more energy, it simply disappears from your reality forever. We are truly that powerful. You are the one who decides what atoms exist and don't have priority or precedence inside your brain. You decide that. You are the sole creator of the reality in your inner world. You are the ultimate authority. And nobody, absolutely nobody or no thing is higher, bigger, or more powerful than you. And as you may have noticed, I think most of us do notice this, that the rabbit hole tends to become more twisted and complex the deeper we peer into it. Being the grand master and ultimate authority of your reality is not actually a decision or a responsibility that you can create, lose, drop, or find one day destroyed. It is your natural essence and your true inherent nature. When you approach the concept, trying to acquire it, as if it were an idea that could be kept safe like a secret treasure, then that means one day you will feel that you lost it. You cannot acquire what you actually are or lose connection with the source itself. You are not actually the sole doer here. Life is mastering itself, doing what it will through you. You can only forget and become ignorant of it by being distracted by more enticing, inviting things of this amazing world. You only need to remember that you are always the manifesting master of your reality and simply cannot be anything else. 
Another dimension and depth to this enlightening inquiry is asking yourself the top ten questions you most need to ask yourself around it. For example, if you're not the authority of your life, then who are you? Are you in love with yourself and your life? If not, why not? How are you relating with others you love in your life? What's your relationship with the idea of being being empowered, conscious being? What would happen if you started interacting with everyone in your life from this reference point that you are a relaxed, self-appointed authority of your reality. Are you trying to control others in your relationships, attempting to prove to yourself and them that you're the authority? What would your life be like to be free from any kind of disbelief around being the absolute creator of your reality. If you ask yourself, or when you ask yourself, why are so many people not living this radiantly alive, self-mastered existence, you may find a lifetime of questions that soon follow. We have only imagined that we are powerless and fearful. That's it. We've only imagined it. We believed in the fabrication of this lie because, because others we loved believed in it. We have, also, we have also had entire lifetimes of victim-like karma that says we are not responsible for creating every detail of our reality. It's from these powerless spokes of our karmic wheel that cause all the suffering in our life. And once we can digest the truth that we are the center, the source of pure consciousness itself, that knows no failure is totally timeless, transcendent of pain, beyond space, and free from all limiting beliefs, then we discover our spiritual doorway to total freedom. When we look at how our consciousness functions, we can see that it behaves much like the hub of a wheel from which your entire life radiates out from. As we see with any wheel, it has no center. The radius and circumference cannot exist. You are this center, and so everything must stem from you. The spokes of the wheel are your thoughts and feelings, and the totality of the sphere represents your life. When you step back from it all, and you will, you can see that the center is completely unmoving and this is what holds the entire wheel together. While the circumference in the spokes continually move, change, and spin, the center remains fixed at the core. We can see things changing around us only because our center is unmoving. If the center was moving, everything would appear to be still. 
we need a solid reference point or point of view to see movement and action. We are that unmoving source which does not change and thus are always influencing that which is around us. You are this fixed central sun, the source of creativity, creating your life and each moment by itself. You are a purely radiant, infinite energy who is inventing everything around it in all directions. You were free before you were born. Your consciousness has always been continuously creating some version of reality, whether you're aware of it or not. Think about all the amazing things you've forgotten throughout the journey of your life. When we can remember what is vitally important, we return to our life purpose and mission. When we are aware that we are the ultimate authority of our every moment-to-moment -moment reality, we are spiritually awakened and have a greater ability to control and decide which direction we want life to go. Through simply realizing we are the ultimate authority. We are free. Otherwise, our life acts a lot like a sailboat without a keel or rudder, and our destiny blown across the sea by the random yet highly intelligent direction of the wind. When you know you are the ultimate authority of your reality, you do not have to prove it to anybody, and especially not to yourself. From this self-realized perspective, you understand that you cannot lose your power. You always already are the hub of the wheel, and nothing can take this away. You are the power, the core, that is manifesting whatever you desire in your life. Never again can this be altered, and no longer are you enticed to play the victim, villain, hero, or unconscious saboteur in your relationships. Instead, you naturally become more of the self-realized, creative genius who is co-designing your entire reality from a place of enthusiastic love, lightness, and joy. One who knows the self has nothing more to do, nor has he any more thoughts. From then on, the infinite power will carry out all further actions that may be necessary for him. Ramana Marishi. You are the supreme ruler of your inner world. We all are. This is our territory. When there is no more small you to be hurt or lost, you are truly free then you no longer have to unwillingly cross over another treacherous ocean of fear, pain, agony, separation, or lack to find that central paradise of calmness inside your heart and your soul. When the ego is lost, the soul is found, and your thoughts no longer have power over you anymore. When you truly realize who or what is that force which is always ultimately creating your reality and that you can never be, ever be separate
from that again, then you claim your sovereign birthright to master this life in all its dimension and form. Join you in the meditation. Return to close us out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. The stories that your mind invents are covering up the truth of your being. You imagine that you are trapped in a world of suffering, and so that is your reality. Good news is that you are already free. You are an infinite divine being. It is time to pierce the illusions of your mind, seek the truth of who you are. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night, the following morning. We'll return here Wednesday, March 13, 2024, around 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call and around 9 p.m. Eastern to continue our time for change call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, and purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude at all times, no matter what's going on within or outside of you.